succeed. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. little zoom from Sean there. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. No pressure. Uh, but audience coordinator Erin Schwaberini came back, came backstage right before I came out, and she said, these people are fun. <laughs> these people are fun. <laughs> then I said to her, I'll be the judge of that. But no, no. No. Oh, please. I'm giving you all something. Don't worry about it. I don't know what I'm giving you, but we're giving you something. Welcome to the show. I'm Jace. Let's start with this. Forget candy. <laughs> Forget candy for Halloween. A guy in Massachusetts offered up rotisserie chickens <laughs> to trick-or-treaters last week. That's right. He gave the kids... No, this is great. Audience, you're going to love this. He gave the kids uh, the option to get a chicken or a full-size candy bar. <laughs> there he is right there. Out of 20 kids who stopped, only two took the chicken. Aww. But he calls it a success. Are you kidding me? In my neighborhood, I would have taken the lemon pepper one. I would have taken the <laughs> original spiced one. My friend, my friend Colleen gave away hotel toiletries. I'm not joking. Yeah. And next year, we decided, because of that guy, we're going to give away pierogies. That's nice, right. Nice, nice, yeah. Delicious. <laughs> I'll give you my address after the show. Let's get started. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, filling in for Kendall. Give it up for Fallon, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> How you doing, friend? Good. Oh, I love it. Oh. Yeah. This is one of my favorite songs. Ever. Oh, it's good. Laura, it's, it's hype. A hype song. Yeah. Laura Brannigan, if you're ever at a bar and you hear this song, chances are I'm running the jukebox. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I play it every oh, time. It's so good. I love it. How was, uh, how was your weekend? It was really good. By the way, I was going to say, I love rotisserie chicken so much, but it's like the one food where you go back to like being a caveman. Like I sit over it like an animal, just oh, like yeah. eating it like this. It's so gross. And are you like me? I don't need any sides. No. I can, that is just my meal. No. And I'll just eat the whole chicken. Yeah, you're yeah. like, I'll never finish it as you're searching under a leg for any la like last little morsels. Yeah. yeah. And it's the only way where I don't feel like, I, like the chicken skin. I'm like, oh no, girl, that's where the seasoning is. That's just <laughs> exactly. put that in your mouth. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Need, I don't need utensils. I don't need a plate. I'll no, just eat it over no. the carton. Yeah. How, how are you dealing with uh, the uh, day, uh, daylight saving yeah. time? How are you dealing with it's that? Not, it's not good in my household, Jason. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. Um, my, I have a toddler, and I thought she was going to be the difficult one because they don't comprehend that, and then that means they'll wake up at 4 a.m. instead of 5 a.m. But actually, the one that suffered the most in my household was my dog, Dolly, um, also known as Big Beef. Is, um, there, is your animal sitting like a human? Yes, she is. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is, um, yeah. She is watching Peppa Pig right there. Yeah. Um, and she... Fallon, Fallon, I don't mean... To, are you sure... Are you sure that's not Jake dressed up as a dog? I just... Yeah. He literally goes, Fallon, look at her. And I looked over and she's just sitting up with her leg out watching yeah. TV. But she... <laughs> we call her Big Beef because she's hungry all the time. But it really affected her. She was like up at 4 a.m. wanting breakfast. At 3.30, we finally couldn't take it anymore. We fed her dinner because it was like, I can't listen to her. Like, she clicks around like, oh, oh, yeah. like, I just feed me, Like please. us with the rotisserie chicken exactly, nearby. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better. I'm like, oh, this has affected her a lot more than the toddler. Fallon told the story, and then I started laughing because yesterday, you know, I have a boxer, Dexter, and I have a, a French bulldog, Mr. Big. 
And Dexter is very food motivated. Mm -hmm. And Dexter is very smart, and he knows what 4 o'clock in our house is when he eats. Yep. Yesterday, it gets to be about 3.30, and Dexter starts going like this. <laughs> 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 and I look at Colin and I go, and I look at Dexter on our section and I go, the hell is your problem? And I, I literally go, what is your problem? And I said, you still have a half hour. It took Colin and I about four seconds mm -hmm. and Colin goes, are you kidding me? That dog knows what time it is. <laughs> and he knows that it should be 4.30 yeah. and not 3.30. And yeah. you're starving And him. you're starving that dog. Yeah. Love those animals. I know. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> by the way, by the way, because you guys notice everything and we get emails about everything, I'll explain this little guy a little bit later in the show. But right now, <laughs> the trailer I've been waiting for finally arrives. BravoCon invaded Las Vegas this weekend, bringing nearly every star from the Bravo universe. And yesterday, we finally got our first look at the upcoming girls' trip, Real Housewives of New York legacy. Now, despite being off cameras for a few years, the women of New York have not lost a step. Uh, look at this. Fresh from New York. We're going back to the same villa. Is it bringing back memories? We're all starving. And we don't want to eat without you. It's 4 o'clock. Didn't you miss her? <laughs> you have a boyfriend? You have no boyfriend? I have whatever I want. I'm very pleased. Can you tell us who it is? <laughs> I'm so normal and even tempered. Kelly is like dealing with one of those Ruba cubes. I am an action verb. That's You're an action right. verb? Okay. You've been asking me all day long. Oh. Get a mask and not a house to go. Names will never hurt me. There's six women here, and you're all divorced. Kristen's husband was cheating. He admitted to being a member of the affairs website. Is it a flirting thing? Or... I know my truth. Eagles don't fly with pigeons, okay? <laughs> so go get your breadcrumbs and get back to me tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Audience, just so we're, we're clear on that quote, eagles don't fly with pigeons. Okay, yeah. uh, that's what that I don't know what that means from Dorinda, but eagles don't fly with <laughs> pigeons. The show features my girl Dorinda, clap, Luann, who I have a story about later, uh, Sonia Morgan, Ramona, R Ramona's embroiled in all of those allegations, mm -hmm. and Kelly Kalor and Ben Simone, ooh, uh, and Kristen Tankman. As they vacation in St. Bart's, they're returning to a villa that they were in uh, in season, I believe, six or seven, when Luann slept with a pirate. Oh, and, and <laughs> oh I didn't know about I'm that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Leo, take five. Allegedly slept oh. with a pirate. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't... I don't, I don't need Countess suing me today. I don't need, I, uh, <laughs> she's not going to be happy with what I have to say later anyway. It premieres, oh. it pre no, she's fine. Actually, it's not Countess. It premieres December uh, on Peacock. This, this, so, just so you know, because I know you're not a Housewives fan, mm -hmm. this is my Super Bowl. Okay. This is All my, right. this is my Super Bowl. Gotcha. Y'all have the Super Bowl. This is my Super Bowl. I understand. This is mine. Yeah. This is mine. The best players. Yep. It's the best play. The analogy works. It's the best players on the field. You know, it's it's all the best. It's like, gotcha. oh, you know, you know what more? It's like, an, here's a bit better sports analogy. It's the all-star game. Oh. It's the, base, it's the okay. baseball all-star game. Okay. That's, That's what that is. Now I get it since I'm a sports person. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a rotisserie chicken and plop my butt Back right in. there in yeah. front of the... All right. Next in the dish, the life of Barbara. Oh. CBS, Sun I know. CBS Sunday Morning on Sunday Morning featured an interview with the one and only Barbara Streisand yesterday. And it started, it started in her personal basement slash shopping mall. Look at this. <laughs> Descend to the basement of Barbara Streisand's Malibu home and you'll be transported to her own private mall. Yes, a mall. I love to collect. I'm a collector. Yeah. So I love antiques. I didn't have a doll, so I put hot water into a hot water bottle, which felt like a real person. Wow, Barbara. I, I think that you've made up for not having a doll when you were That's a child. That's right, wow. I do. Bee's doll shop is a poor girl's fantasy. Yeah, she blows bubbles. 
Yes. Can you believe that? Brought to life Streisand style. Come on in. Another on reveal in. at Barbara's. This is my antique clothes room. Of course it yes. is. <laughs> but by the way, she's too modest to tell you Fallon also has an antique clothes room. That's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Barbara, Barbara welcomed Gail into her home ahead of the release of her autobiography. It comes uh, out tomorrow. Now, in the book, Barbara talks about her legendary career on stage. She talks about the movies, Prince of Tides, Yen Tol. Uh, during the interview, she also remembered singing with Judy Garland and how Judy actually relates to Barbara's life now. Listen. Only later we became friends. I remember her coming to my apartment and I thought, now I know what she's frightened about. That's what happens when you have a long career. It doesn't get easier. Yeah. It gets harder. But Barbara, when you have no fear, when you know you're going to be famous, you're not going to be famous. You don't have fear today, no. I don't have fear today? I'm asking. Of course, I don't want to sing anymore in public. You don't? No. <laughs> oh. No. That's it. Yeah. She's done. She's not going to do it. Barbara said oh. her editor on the book had to convince her to write about her private life, including her <clears throat> relationships with Ryan O'Neill, Don Johnson, and Andre Agassi. I forgot that they dated. Oh. Oh. And <laughs> if you want to read the book, set, a, set along a lot of time uh, because it's 992 pages. <laughs> And the audio book will take you like 50 hours. It's two days. It's two days. <laughs> In comparison, Moby Dick was a day and a half. If you wanna, yeah. Any Herman Melville will take you yeah, right about this. I'm reading it, though. I'm not reading it. I'm going to listen to it. But yeah, I'm uh, Jeff's laughing at the thought of me reading. Set yeah. aside yeah. two days, yeah. yeah, for that. Oh, my gosh. That's a very, very long book. Uh, very. I, mean, I hope there's an intermission in the middle of it. I you know. know. I mean? like, yeah. Wasn't Britney Spears only like 250 or 300 pages well, yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah, but there are mazes in the middle of that one. Yeah, I, mean, I, I could, know. You know, it's little, true. A little crosswords and stuff. <laughs> a little pop-up book. I don't know. <laughs> we have a lot more to come. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. John Oliver is known for poking fun at local newscasters. And last night, <laughs> come back to the TV. Last night, he took aim at local news when they dress up for Halloween. This is so good, you guys. Look at this. And now, it was Halloween. And local TV hosts did what they always do. I should have done some research as to what Teletubbies say. I think they're just walking around eating custard or something. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I like that. that. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, that's you know what I mean? Yeah. That. Then he goes like that. Ooh. How are you doing on this Halloween? i got to be honest with you. I can't breathe through this thing. I can't see what's going on. <laughs> I'm sweating buckets. I can't grasp anything. I can't turn the page. <laughs> Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. What's up, ladies? I say, Hi, Barbie. Oh, hi, Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to bring that alien into the studio and that alien does weather. About 10 degrees below average for this time of year. Temperatures will be in the upper 50s and low 60s. A little bit cooler over the Potomac Highlands. 50 right on the money up there. You heard him. <laughs> we're just having a ball here today, folks. We may need to stop Halloween. We may, need to, uh, look, we may need to stop it, and you'll see why. Our Halloween costume did not fare any better with the public. Mm -hmm. we'll, you'll get to that. We'll get to that a little bit later. Las Vegas, meanwhile, became the center of pop culture this weekend, and not just because of BravoCon. Joining us live from Hollywood with more is Branson from TMZ. Give it up, audience. 
Good Hi, morning. Branson. Good morning. Hi, buddy. Uh, first up, Katy Perry drew some big names to her residency in Vegas. Who was there? She did. Uh, it was a star-studded event, I'm telling it. And, and just to remember, this is the final Vegas residency show for Katy Perry. Uh, I myself looked for tickets, I have to say, and it was really expensive, and the event did sell out. So it was a massive, massive uh, show. And yeah, we had some stars there. Uh, just to name a few, we had Celine Dion, which I think is most significant. We had uh, Cameron Diaz there. Uh, we had Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were also in, in attendance. So this is a big uh, show and you know everybody wanted to come and support her for her her last show and uh, but yeah more significantly Celine Dion was there and this is interesting because this is her second time that she's been spotted out in public and if you haven't uh, you know seen the the news the last couple years she had announced that she'd been diagnosed with stiff person syndrome a very rare disease that affects only uh, you know a, a, like very small amount of people and just to see her out having fun yeah. being with her sons and everything this is amazing just to see this she's yeah she's one of those right on yeah she's one of those she's one of those stars that everybody just wants her to do well like everyone just wants her to be well let's stay Absolutely. in Vegas Beverly Hills housewife Kyle Richards had a vulnerable moment on the Bravo con stage was she asked I can imagine was she asked about her marriage she did, she did, absolutely. But we, we gotta start at the beginning a little bit before uh, this Q&A that she did on stage. Uh, our sister uh, news network, Too Fab, actually talked to her and she had talked about how her and uh, uh, Mauricio are doing okay. Like, you know, they, they're still separated, they're living under the same roof, but things were kind of cordial. But then she goes on stage and a fan during this Q&A go ahead and asks her this burning question. She says, hey, um, what, what, what's the status? How are you guys doing? You and Mar Mauricio, they're not divorced, obviously. They just separated back in July after 27 years of marriage. But she got emotional. She choked up, and she said that people keep telling her, um, just fix the problem that she's been dealing with, the different problems. Um, but she said it's not that simple. These problems go beyond uh, different things. And, uh, yeah. But, you know, Mauricio was actually spotted over the weekend out with his Dancing with the Stars uh, partner, uh, Emma Slater. And they were holding hands again. They were out to dinner. They went out to a nightclub. So, I don't know. It, it, things look a little bit messy to me. Yeah, very messy. Finally. Finally, it looks like Taylor Swift has a new member of her girl squad. Who is it? I can't believe I just read that sentence, but go ahead. <laughs> No, she does. Uh, she went out to dinner uh, this weekend, and uh, she had Sophie Turner with her. She had Selena Gomez, Gigi Hadid, uh, Cara Delevingne, and uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes' wife, Brittany Mahomes, who has been kind of her like, game day BFF that we've been seeing her in the VIP box with. But no, they went out to dinner out in New York City this weekend. Uh, we saw her with Selena Gomez, arm in arm. We saw her holding uh, uh, hands with one of the other girls. And it was just, looks like, you know, the past few weeks, it seems like Taylor's been out to dinner with this squad a few times, but it's significant because these all these girls are in the news. Sophie Turner with Joe Jonas in the middle of her divorce. You've got Selena Gomez uh, under fire with uh, her comments on the Israel conflict, and then, uh, you know, Brittany Mahomes, some of the fans are a little bit against her. So all these girls are kind of just in the news, you yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely. Branson, thank you, buddy. Have a good week. Thank for you, more you of too. These stories, Thanks for having me. Go to TMZ.com. Yeah, and then uh, it, uh, it, further proof, it's Taylor's world and we're living in it. Dancing with the Stars this week is going to be all Taylor Swift. Yeah, because they want people to watch. I get yeah. it. Yeah, it's like, how can we get people to watch? Oh, bring Taylor Swift into the mix. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I gotta, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to pile on to Britney, but I, she didn't come across great in that quarterback series on Netflix. Mm. So, yeah. I Have you seen that? that? No. I only watched it because Kirk, Kirk Cousins was in it. I was, oh. yeah, I was confused yep. half the time. But anyway, <laughs> more just for you now we could go down as the biggest box office bomb of the year you probably didn't know it but John Cena had a new movie out <laughs> the audience is <laughs> silent yeah they all were there it's called freelance look what the hell just happened your one man's security detail happened he's a hero I met the president of a country in the middle of a coup this is the scoop of a lifetime you gotta be alive to have a scoop for a lifetime. We never should have come. Let's go. You can't just leave him. So, John, no, 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 audience, you don't have to clap for that. No, 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 no. I, I need your energy to be saved for later in the show. Um, 
John plays an Army Special Forces soldier who provides security for a journalist. Get this, are you ready? The, the movie has a 0% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Now that is rare, and as far as money, as far as money, it only earned $5 million, oh. and it had a budget of more than $40 million. Oh. I'm surprised it cost that much. I mean, yeah. it, it really, when that started to roll, I thought it was an SNL skit. Yeah, it I looks like it yeah. is, kind of, like one of their pre-produced, like, segments. Yeah. I liked John Cena in the Amy Schumer movie, and I love Allison Brie, so it makes me sad that it's mm, so horrible. But that happens to the best of them. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> every I think every actor has yeah. some kind of bomb. Everyone I know. Yeah. But there are bombs, and right. then there's a zero percent on. But run. that's but th this is the kind of movie that gets a cult following because it's so bad. True. That True. it could like be I don't know maybe yeah. I don't know probably not. Probably not. This one. <laughs> You're very nice, but no, it's no. It's like Sharknado, you know, or like those. Oh, oh, big Sharknado fan yeah. here. Nope. <laughs> 500 points for the Sharknado <laughs> reference from Val. And next up, taking their spot in mu uh, music history, several big names were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this weekend, including some artists people my age I grew up listening to. First up, this is worthy, uh, George Michael. So when you say that you need me, and that you'll never leave me, I know you're wrong, you're not. That will be. Um, and the interesting choice you saw it before Adam, Carrie Underwood doing the George Michael tribute, performing two of his songs. Thank you. Oh, we yeah, have the audience is with me. I didn't even have to throw shade this time. <laughs> the studio audience was doing it for me. Maybe everyone else was busy. <laughs> so they had to get Carrie. I don't Why are you so nice today? No, you not, are no, it was a jab. Like they literally couldn't get anyone else, so they yeah. got yeah. Carrie. You know. Because again, I will openly She's admit it. I am biased because I, I I'm gonna be. Pl I don't care for her. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's I, fair. I. She has a great voice. Mm -hmm. But you're, you maybe think you would expect someone that's like a little bit more entertaining, maybe? <laughs> Again, I don't have to do the shade in this segment. <laughs> the audience and Fallon are, yeah. No, some people, we know this, some people are singers and some are entertainers. And few are both. Yes. Yeah. Other inductees include Cheryl Crow. Yeah, what took so long for Cheryl? Willie Nelson? Willie oh. wasn't in there before? Anyway, uh, Kate Bush and the first female rapper, Missy Elliott. Yep, she deserves it. You can, uh, you can watch the ceremony on Disney Plus. Yeah, I've never, it's in Cleveland. I've driven by it, mm -hmm. but I've never, have you ever gone? No. 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 I'm not, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> still to come today, we're opening up the mailbag, and you still have a lot to say about what happened on our show, specifically oh, our Halloween costume. We're, Why? I, I'm just telling you, we're canceling Halloween next year. <laughs> but first, drag queen royalty, Bibi Zahara Benet won the first season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Bibi joins us in studio to talk about a big charity event that's happening this week. That and more, Cameroon! Welcome back, friends. It's been nearly 15 years <laughs> since our next guest earned a spot in TV history. How? Winning the very, very first season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Look. The next drag superstar. Is BB. Ah! 
Bebe, by the way, will be fainting like that later in the show. That was 2009, when Bebe was just a small baby, uh, when Bebe Zahara Benet took home the crown and helped launch the show that's still running to this day and is a phenomenon. Now, Bebe is celebrating 20 years of drag, and you are invited. Welcome back to the show, my friend Marshall, a.k.a. the superstar, Bebe Zahara Benet, everybody. <laughs> It's so good to see you. It is so... You look is, really good. You look really good. You're having a poncho moment. Uh, you know, everybody I needs a good old poncho. How do I you? know. Hi, how you doing? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I started with an easy <laughs> question. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm good. I'm You're alive. Good. I'm alive. alive. That's a good thing, that, right? Well, you're yeah. busy. Yeah. You're busier than... Let's get... To, okay, so let's clock down. Uh, let's start with the, really the catalyst for you being here. Tell everybody about the bling ball and what and and what it benefits. Oh well, in 2021, as I don't know if many of you know, but in 2021, um, I was the mayor gave me or like honored me with November 13th being the BB Zaharbonne Day. Yeah, and it's BB Day here <laughs> in the city of Minneapolis. Right. Yeah. And, and, mayor Fry. Yeah, and it was just because of the work I do for the community. I also released my documentary being BB, and I was celebrating. 20 years in the biz and um, so what I did is that I made a promise to myself that every year when this time comes I want to shed some light on the artistry that exists here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Just because this is where I started my career and the community has been very, very supportive and it's my way to give back. So every year I want to honor um, those who are doing amazing work to support the arts. And this year we're supporting the Rojo Collective, which is all about mentoring and helping out uh, BIPOC artists that exist in Minneapolis. I think the arts is very, uh, very important. Uh, a lot of, <laughs> a lot yes. of people People don't, you know, it's always like that afterthought for some people, but it's really, really a priority. And if COVID has not taught you anything, you know, everybody leaned towards the arts, you know, in their time of need. And I think it's important that we celebrate it. We support the young ones who are doing amazing things and those that are already doing amazing things like me. Hey, so yeah. the bling ball is just for folks to come out together, wear your finest bling. <laughs> <laughs> you can find bling everywhere in the stores yeah. now. Everything is bling, honey. Beyonce did it with Renaissance, so everything is bling now. Yeah. So you won't have an issue finding a bling. You know, Anywhere. JC Penny has bling. Oh my gosh. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. JC, ooh. I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 no, but we want folks to just come and celebrate with us. It's going to be an immersive experience. We're doing it with the Lavish Lab, which is an amazing decor company, and we're about to transform Minneapolis. We're about to turn it. We're about to dance. We're to battle with the DJs and have a good old time, but then support the art, which will be the Rojo Collective, which we'd... Uh, so if you're watching us from other cities, book your flight and come to Minneapolis and see BB if you're watching from Chicago or Orlando. Um, when you think of your, as I was reading that intro, I was thinking to myself, no matter what happens in your life, nobody can take that, oh, you are going to be a trivia answer for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? You're gonna be, I mean, RuPaul's Drag Race is part of the zeitgeist, it's part of the pop culture fabric, and no matter what happens to you, no one will ever be able to take away that you started it. I mean, you were number one. Do you allow yourself to wrap your brain around that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because it feels you like you know it what was, I mean. You're, you're it feels like it was yesterday because I just feel like this, you know, with that platform and there's a lot of responsibility that comes with it. Yeah. So we are always just always trying. Even to, back then, when it wasn't as popular as it is now, there is a lot of responsibility, and now it's become such a big thing. So I now I'm trying to appreciate it even more. But many years ago. I'm still very young, but many years ago. <laughs> well, why did you? There was. Many, a, you tried to, did you try to distance yourself a little bit for a time? No, 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 no. Because I think it's part of my history. I think it's part of my story, and you know, I always have to go back to where it all began. You know, and Drag Race was what really moved me. You know, to the next level. So I always have love for RuPaul and the support. But guess what? We started it in Minneapolis. I, yeah, that's why, again, if you're not kidding, 
many right here started and it right here. people don't understand how much greatness exists in Minneapolis. Absolutely. Yeah. They don't. <laughs> Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Yeah, when you talk to Queens from all, are we starting, because, you know, I hate the term flyover country, I do, but are you starting to see the recognition that something is and has always been happening here in the Twin Cities, culture-wise, whether it's drag or music, when you travel around, is it starting to catch on that there's something happening here? Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Like when it comes to the arts now, I mean, like we're the top three or whatever. Is, yeah. We are. And now people are like, Minneapolis, I didn't know that. Uh, now it's in the conversation. And like I tell people, you just need to come and experience yes. it for yourself. People are always surprised. We are second. I don't even know. We are second in theater seats per capita to New York City. Second. I mean, there's a That's reason. a big deal. It's a huge that's deal. That's a big deal. Theater seats per capita. It's, yeah. And that's why you see so many artists wanting to go to the Guthrie. We have so many queens wanting to perform here. Or a lot of major th uh, tours are coming come here. Come here or start they here. They have to come here. Yes, they do. They, they absolutely. Have to. Uh, so you have the club Roxy's. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We got to go down to Roxy's. We got to go. Uh, well, I'm, part of, I'm part of the cast. You're part of the cast. The Roxy's Cabaret. That's yeah, right. Which, you know, that's. Do you like having a steady gig? I love it. Yeah. Oh, I've traveled so much. Yes, I mean, I, I still enjoy traveling, but sometimes traveling is not that glamorous. Like, people <laughs> think it is. It's people not. think it's, it's such a lot of work. And then just being able to be back at home and be with the cast, with Monica and Nina, and just being able to do what we do so well, and having folks just come and have a good old time, that's all that matters, right? That's we, why we do what we do. Will you come back and see me soon? Don't make it so if long. If you come time. to the bling ball, then I'll <laughs> Okay. Done. <laughs> Give it up for Marshall, everybody. For all things BB, follow BB Zahara on Instagram. BB's Bling Ball, here's the info, is happening this Friday at Glass House in Minneapolis. Tickets are available now on eventbrite.com. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Give me a hug, my love. Let me get this with you. Well, I had a busy weekend uh, and wanted to share a few little highlights with you. Uh, st it's story time, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah. On Friday night, I was part of Countess Luann's cabaret show here locally at Mystic Lake Casino. I was really excited to be asked. There she is, girl. Work on that stage. Uh, I was asked to be the moderator for a Q&A section uh, that happens about 15 minutes in the show uh, where I moderate the questions coming in from the audience. Now, I tell this full unedited version on my radio show uh, listen to that later if you want but here here's what I will tell you right off the bat audience um, it went it went a little to the right um, there I am right there with one of the people I was instructed uh, by the the wonderful crew they they had very little you know very little rules they just said to me Jason find fun people and when Lou comes to you act like you guys are friends so I said, okay, <laughs> great. Yeah. So they told me when to go to the area. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got up out of my seat. They had me sit in the audience with Colin and my high school friend, Michelle, my prom date, who was here on Friday. So I get in position, and then the lights come up, and Lou comes to me. And as I'm standing there, I try to think of a line to seem very casual, like we're buddies, like something I yeah. would say to you. <laughs> so <laughs> she comes to me, and I said, uh, she was, uh, please welcome Jason Matheson from The Jason Show. And I go, hi, Lou. And she goes, hi, Jason. I go, Lou. I said, I fell asleep with you last night. And because, let me tell you, I fall asleep on my iPad to Real Housewives of New York. Right. I have to fall asleep with noise, like mm -hmm. some people with a fan. So I meant that every night I watch Housewives. And I said, I fell asleep to you last night. And she looked, she went like this. She goes, Wow, that's quite an intro line. And I went, <laughs> oh, God. So, audience, all of my friends know me. At that moment, I wanted to just, like, pee. I just, like, wanted, like, this is not going to go well. Because I, I thought to myself, oh, God, she thinks I meant that she's boring and I fell asleep. And I go, oh, God. So I persevered and I went on to find people. So I'm walking, I'm walking oh, around the, I'm walking, I'm working the room and, at one point, I get to an area and I'm asking a question, and the woman was talking about something about a misunderstanding. So it, it was an opening for me to go, oh, by the way, I go, Lou, 
I said, I got to tell you, I said, I hope that you didn't think that I, um, that I fell asleep to you. What I meant was I fall asleep to Rhodey every night. She looked at me on stage and she was, darling, I learned many years ago, never complain and never explain. <laughs> and I went, so, 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 I was like, get me the hell out of here. Oh, no. Get me, I was, it was, I own it, it was me, but I was off track the whole, uh -uh. I wanted no. to die. Like, I, I just. I would die. I'm the kind of person and that I would not let it go at that point either because I would be so desperate for her to like me. I would like somehow quickly order a cookie bouquet to be delivered to her yes! on stage, like desperate for her to oh. like me. Oh, are you kidding me? me? I simultaneously ordered a plane <laughs> to get me out of there and an edible arrangement. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Oh. Back with the mailbag after this. Oh it was a night. Oh, I was oh so embarrassed. Oh it's on me. Every morning, uh, every Monday, rather, we take time to hear what you have to say about our show. Leo, open up the mailbag. Here we go, everybody. You got me. First up, Halloween. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't end. Hollow this never is going to yeah. end. Halloween was last week, and we got what we can politely call a mixed response to our costumes. We portrayed travel nightmares. I was an airline credit card with no value. Uh, Fallon was a tiny bag of sun chips you get on a flight. Executive producer Jeff was a passenger changing their baby's diaper on the tray table. And photographer Eric was the passenger who decides it's a great idea to go barefoot on a plane. Kathy says, so disappointed with your Halloween show. <laughs> your costumes were ridiculous. If you have to explain your costumes, it didn't work. Oh, hey. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kathy, I'm coming over, girl. Someone's, I'm coming over. Yeah, I was like, someone's taking Halloween house. a I, little too It's Halloween, too girl. We ain't conducting trade relations with Japan. Anyway. <laughs> and, Jayla Drive on Instagram says, lame guys. Okay, but then she goes, but I hate dressing up on Halloween too. Okay, yeah, I yeah. Mean, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I don't, I'm sorry. Just a snort. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. I don't, I, we're not doing Halloween next year. You know, it wasn't all negative. Michelle says, truly original. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. And Katie. And Katie says, I love the Halloween costume choices this year. Thank you. The truth of the matter is, what we do a big Halloween show. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. To listen to Countess Luann, never explain, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Next, a comment from JoJo regarding Fallon's Sun Chips oh, costume. Okay. We're not done. She says, I flew in from Charlotte and was talking about you guys and the Sun Chips, the flight attendant. After she served everybody else, she came back and gave oh. me a second bag. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. See, Fallon, we are affecting change. Yes, we are. We are. For the better, yeah. And the final comment on those ridiculous costumes is this. This one regarding Jeff's costume. Uh, he portrayed the passenger who puts their hair over the seat. Sheila says, I have a confession. I flip my hair over my living room chair all the time. Now I'm worried I've done it on airplanes and didn't realize. So here's my public apology to all I may or may not have offended. Yeah. That's fair. Sheila, you know I love you. She's making change moving forward. That's See, what's important. That yeah. costume, we are providing change. Yeah. Now look, the two of us will never get upgraded on Delta again, but no, that's fine. No, I never did anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> Next up, comments about our recent Best Thing Ever show. Uh, my pick was the West End Hotels candle. Cheryl says, look, I'm not a candle person, she wrote, and don't spend that much for a candle, but I ordered the West End white tea candle. I had to light it right away, and I love it. Thanks, Jason. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. it is. It's a... It is a really good, it's a really good candle. If you're looking to spend your mortgage on a candle this month, <laughs> this is the candle for you. That's right. Yeah. And Bob had a reaction to executive producer Jeff's best thing ever, a nose hair trimmer. <laughs> oh. 
He says, hey, as a mid-60s guy, this trimmer rocks, both for nose hairs and those rogue ear hairs I get, or as my stylist calls them, mosquito landing pads. Oh, oh God. TMI. Oh. <laughs> and we wonder why we don't win an Emmy. Uh, next, a comment from Julie regarding one of my favorite, uh, one of my best things ever from years ago. She says, hi, Jason. I remember those Bissell stomp and go stain lifting pads that you endorsed. Well, I just got an email from Bissell that they discontinued oh, them. No. You, you need to start a petition to bring them back. Um, look. I have things. I, I have a petition for a lot of things. I, I look. I, I need those sun chips to be bigger. Uh, but <laughs> I'll get that. No, they they really were good. Did you ever? No. What are they? I'll make this brief. They were like little rectangles, and they were from Bissell. And like, let's say your dog pee peed on the on yeah. the carpet. You put the pad on there. You stomped on it. You let it sit there. I don't care what the stain was. It would lift those stains, oh. and it didn't discolor your carpet. Oh, that's I don't nice. know what they found out about them. I hope <laughs> not. But I don't know. But if I grow like a 30 or something, I don't know. <laughs> Finally, a comment about the laundry guy's tip uh, last week for washing baseball caps in the dishwasher. Janet says, hey, I've been washing my husband's dirty caps for years in the dishwasher. I put them over a glass bowl because I want them to retain the shape. He's very protective of his hats and has never known I washed them. Of course not. Yeah. They have the little, like, um, they're like plastic too, or whatever they're made of that you put the hat over that you can put in the dishwasher. Oh, really? Yeah, we have one of those. We had one in our laundry room when we bought our house. They left it behind and we're like, what's this for? Never had any idea. And that's what it was no, for, that's I guess. Me, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay connected with our show on social media. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, t Twitter, and TikTok, or the artist formerly known as Twitter. Mm. Just search for Jason Show TV and our personal accounts as well, Jason Matheson, and just search for Fallon KDWB. We'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> If you watched our show on Friday, you know we had uh, a mini reunion of the Clerks cast. They were attending Twin Cities Con, kind of like a Comic Con. Well, not kind of, but here in the Twin Cities. And you'll notice this on my desk. I love the Funko Pops, and I bought one. The only thing I bought, this was Babu Frick from Star Wars. It's about the size of a small child. And uh, <laughs> I bought it right before I moved out, so or moved, uh, went, went on about my day. So you'll see them on my desk. But this was a lovely $25. Oh. So yeah, the, and the vendor said uh, to me, and I quote, please take him. I don't want to repack him. So yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> please, please take him. Please. I'll get you a good deal. <laughs> don't forget to get to get to our show. Go to eventbrite.com. Eventbrite.com or the app and search for the Jason Show. We have a good time, let me tell you. Uh, it's time for the surprise goodbye. You you know how this works. We don't know what's in the segment until I read it right now. Today, you won't believe what one dog does when his owners are away. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> yep. The dog's owners set up a security camera oh. to see what their dog does all day, and they were shocked to see he's ba basically Liberace. Uh, <laughs> he even sings along to his own oh. piano music. No way. That is fantastic. I love him. <laughs> oh. is, it, is it sad that I could literally watch this for hours? No, it's, it makes perfect sense. Oh, look how cute. The neighbors are probably like, what is up with that house? <laughs> no kidding. Can your dog, other than sitting like a human, can they do any, your dog do any tricks? She can eat an entire loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> so, so can Jeff and I. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, the new movie that I'm loving that's sure to get some Oscar buzz. I can't wait to tell you about it. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, never explain and never complain. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. <laughs> never, darling. Never, darling. <laughs>